you had highlighted a book by another advocate. He's an actor as well, Amir Baraka, in his book, Undiagnosed, The Ugly Side of Dyslexia. And you've spoken with so many people about this. Are you seeing more and more advocacy, whether it's through folks in Hollywood? And he has an interesting story himself. He talks about the prison pipeline. We know a lot of people have talked about that connection. But where do you see the need for this advocacy next? Is it specific about dyslexia? Is it specific about science of reading? What are you seeing as the biggest need for how people can continue to advocate for our students, making sure teachers get the knowledge they need? What do you see as the next steps? I think the big thing, and I think the big thing with our film is I'm an optimist. I think reading is very important. I think it's, I like your word. I mean, it's not a situation. I, sometimes I tell people, no, this is a situation. No, this is a reading crisis. There's three films made about it, more films about it. And, and we all work and talk together, all the filmmakers, the other advocates, the writers. You mentioned Amir Baraka, who's in our film, who's a, a wonderful advocate. He grew up in the projects, ended up dealing drugs. He's a man of religion, a man of God, been in prison. He's straightened his life around. He's written books about it. He works at advocation. He advocates at centers, and, he, and one of the nicest guys in the world. You see, this, the sex it doesn't discriminate, and it doesn't care if you're a male or a female, what your religion is, what your race is. Right. I see this pandemic. I see the breeding crisis as a good thing. If we stop pointing fingers at people and just want to fix things, I think you want to know what makes America great again? We do. <laughs> we make America great by working together and realizing that we're all wired completely different. It's not 1964 where... The teacher wants us all to conform and all be writing right-handed. There's reasons why people write with their left hands. There's reasons why people learn differently. It's mm -hmm. it's not a, a dis disability. It's until you're in fourth grade and they haven't been able to teach you. Then we've disabled the person. So right. everybody's not created equal. We're playing a game of poker here, and we're all handed a different set of cards. So we have to understand mm -hmm. that how we're going to get to these to each of these kids in each of these classrooms is we got to pull out all the stops. We have to, and, and that's where this advocacy comes in. And you could be a decoding dyslexia mom. You could be a, you could be a, a reading league educator who goes to your school and says, listen, guys, we got to do better. That's where our film will come in. And as we said earlier, Liz, you and I don't have to be there. I mean, you could have a mirror on a panel. You could have Louisa Motes on the panel. You could have your reading instructor in your hometown on the panel. The important thing is we have to figure out how to get people talking about the unique situation in their town and in their community. Right. Because each kid is a unique human being who is going to learn to read the best that they can by what's ever put in front of them. And I just wanted to say, if we don't get them in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, they're going to become self-esteem problems, which will become discipline problems because Discipline problems and self-esteem problems and acting out is also communication. If, Most often a, there's an underlying reading issue there. Yeah. Yep. And so you said a couple of things there. I think absolutely it doesn't have to be a blame game. We don't have to be at war, right? I was one of those teachers. I was trained. I thought I was doing what was right. I was very dedicated and passionate, but I didn't know what I didn't know. And so we need to, as Maya Angelou says, when you know better, you can do better. And I think a lot of people are at that place now. They're accepting it. We're not trying to blame anybody. We're just going to meet the teachers where they are, give them the knowledge they need. To your point, if every student has a different set of cards, we have to say, okay, where are the cards that we know about? How do we help them get the cards that they're missing?